We begin our, our second half of our look at Henry Osawa Tanner. Uh, and this is kind of a, uh, the, the period where we have this focus on uh, religious uh, Christian narratives, but at the same time his work becomes kind of interesting because I think a lot of the influences of the uh, abstract art movements of the time are kind of also seeping into his work. Uh, he's living in France, uh, and again we have Impressionism, Post-Impressionism, but as we kind of move forward in time we of course have Cubism and Favism as well uh, influencing in, and, and again when we look at these two images, uh, this is Nicodemus visiting Jesus from 1899 on the left is the actual painting and, and then on the right we have a study and to me I, I enjoy looking at his studies because uh, a lot of it is just about how he's using color if nothing else uh, and again we there, there's a, this wonderful abstract quality to them that we kind of see filtering back into his work. Uh, Mary from 1900 kind of in this uh, wonderful space, very similar to the Mary we see from the Annunciation in terms of body posturing and even head tilt. Uh, but again, this was this culmination of a trip that he took uh, down to the Holy Land and also North Africa, places like Egypt, uh, in order to study the architecture of that, that area, in order to give it more of a, of a realistic feel when he was painting these biblical narratives. Uh, but we put this in combination with Salome that he did from 1900 which I think is a wonderful example uh, of his abstract work. We have the character of Salome uh, with, from the narrative of, of John the Baptist uh, and, and we have her in these blues and we can see her head pushing all the way back uh, into the shadows themselves but at the same time we do get a little bit of a distinction uh, of what she looks like, uh, kind of peeking through the mist if you will. Uh, and as we move down her, her form, uh, again, it almost becomes this abstract aspect of just white light. Uh, there in the corner we can of course see a figure of, of John and just in, in, in comparison between the two images and again looking at them uh, not only two very very different women but uh, two very very different approaches to art and this kind of shows you the complexity of Tanner at the time. I mean uh, I, again to be able to move from one area to the other in such a way uh, also, we have the Seine River from 1902, and again, these are a lot of uh, what I think of as, as Monet-esque, if you will, uh, representations, but these are very isolated, and, and again, when we look at the work that he's done, uh, from 1900 forward, the vast majority uh, is along biblical themes. It's almost kind of a, a rare occurrence to see something that's not, so the inclusion of these images uh, is interesting if for that reason, if nothing else. This is much more uh, typical of what you would see Christ and his disciples on the road to Bethany from 1903. And uh, again, this is almost a, a Monet-esque again. We have this kind of filtered light over the entire scene. And, and this is uh, these figures moving forward through the darkness. And, and again, not quite sure where they're going to, but uh, the light is, is uh, definitely there. This is a scene that's very much uh, projected at night, if you will. The Good Shepherd has this very similar feel as, as, as well. It's as if uh, we're looking at the moonlight basking across the landscape and bringing out this figure uh, in and amongst the trees. And again, this is very, very interesting because if you look at other artists from this period, uh, there, there aren't uh, an this huge list of artists that are doing this kind of incorporation of what we think of as traditional uh, Christian thematics and art. And, and a lot of this uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, continuing back to, to older images and older thoughts going all the way uh, back to the Middle Ages. And uh, again, Job and his three friends from 1904, uh, to me, and, I, and I've said this uh, uh, to many people, Tanner is, is kind of one of the last great painters of the religious narrative because after this, uh, a lot of art becomes about other things. And, and uh, uh, for me, he's, he's one of the last people to kind of incorporate uh, these aspects 
of, of the newer kind of concepts of art, but at the same time uh, still reflect these concepts that, that we see uh, so often in uh, the other work that, that we see from Western culture. Uh, Christ at the House of Mary and Martha is another wonderful example of, of him using uh, the canvas in order to create this space, and it's almost amazing how much of a space we can get uh, from, from just him pushing us back and putting the light at the, the very end. The Pilgrims from Emmaus from 1905 is, is another example, uh, very similar interior to the, some of the images we saw before, but again, if you look at the striking realism that he's able uh, to create and the, the, the vision on these people's faces as they uh, look forward, and, and uh, again, it should be noted that nobody's looking at each other, they're all kind of looking up, if you will, uh, towards the ceiling or, or above, if you will, and over in the corner we have a woman as well. Uh, we see at least one of these characters returning with two disciples at the tomb uh, and, and I'm speaking of course of the figure in the foreground with this very very long extended neck and uh, this very uh, a distinct nose that you can kind of follow between the two paintings but this emanation of light that we have from the tomb itself and uh, almost a baroque treatment of the tomb you barely notice it except for the circular uh, uh, aspects of the stone that you can see here we, we again kind of move more towards his abstraction and, and his use of color and, and uh, this impressionistic haze to kind of create this sensation or space, if you will. Uh, uh, if you look at the disciples seeing Christ on the water again, often the distance you can see the figure uh, himself kind of moving towards and, and it's almost as if we're just looking at the entire scene uh, by way of moonlight rather than anything else. And again, as we continue here, we have, I believe, a watercolor there on the left. But uh, again, a lot of this, uh, as we're moving forward, I, I think he's using these narratives as a, as a vehicle, if you will, to kind of explore what the abstraction can actually do uh, to kind of reinforce the narrative. On the image on the right, Christ with the Canaanite woman and her daughter, it's interesting how how little space is actually occupied by the people and how much of the complexion of the background is seen. In this particular image, it's interesting because you can actually see the thickness of the paint uh, on the surface, almost this expressionistic quality uh, that he's kind of manufacturing. And again, this is something that's kind of lost uh, with a lot of Tanner paintings, is that there is this built-up surface of, of texture that he has. And uh, as we kind of continue and look at more the end of his career here, this texture really becomes uh, a phenomenal part of the work. Uh, two different images of Mary, and again, uh, Christ and his mother studying the scriptures. I've also seen this called uh, Christ and his uh, learning to read. Uh, wonderful images, again, relying on this wonderful blue light or, or blue color that we have manifest that we so much associate uh, with Mary and, and maternity in particular. And uh, The image on the right, it's interesting because the color becomes as much uh, a part of it as the figure itself. Uh, the Holy Family, and, and we look into this interior space, and uh, again, so far, uh, Tanner is able to, to just push everything so far back, and, and we even have this uh, image of Joseph, and he almost looks like he's just halfway through this room itself. Uh, I, again, we, we have this wonderful use of light, and this is one of the, the nice things is with Tanner being uh, uh, in and Francie is, of course, able to go to the Louvre and study many of the paintings there. So a lot of his work is actually influenced by European uh, art much more than, than just his American heritage in itself. What becomes interesting uh, with these images is how much the figures become part of the background and how he's using a very similar painting technique to compose the figures and also compose the background, kind of creating this solidness between everything. Uh, Angels Appearing Before the Shepherds from 1911, uh, one of my favorite, down at the very, very bottom right corner we can see the shepherds themselves and then uh, as we kind of move up to the left there we see the angels and uh, the angels almost appear unfinished but it's it's just this concept of, of abstraction that he's created where 
uh, in this, he's creating this idea that looking up at these angels and seeing something manifest in that way, uh, you might not uh, directly recognize them as being realistic. Uh, continuing and, and again moving just a little bit off of uh, the direct path of, of uh, the biblical narrative. We have Algiers from 1912, continuation of his journey and his study uh, of North Africa and looking at the different aspects and, and architecture that's available there. Again, uh, but we also have to look at how he's painting and, and uh, a man leading a donkey in front of the Palais de Justice in Tangier. Uh, this is very abstract and, and a lot of it is uh, very, very much relying on, on building up the canvas layers, if you will, uh, and this idea of texture telling as much of a story as anything. Look how little uh, is actually put on the surface and, and how he's really hinting at areas uh, of the location as much as he's directly describing them now. A street scene from Tangiers, 1912. Uh, this again, he has this affection for this blue light uh, and this yellow light, and this is another great example of that. You can see these figures in the sunlight with this bathed yellow, uh, but as we go into the shadows, it's this wonderful blue that we've seen before, uh, even even within the figure of Mary, where again, it's not quite uh, uh, this darkness. It's almost this soothing concept of of uh, a, a blue. Blue. And uh, as we continue, we kind of get more and more abstract. And a wonderful study here, landscape with irises. We have a figure there underneath the trees that really does become part of the landscape itself. And uh, the treatment of the skies and, and uh, uh, these wonderful trees that, uh, again, this is much about the application of paint uh, through the guise of this, uh, you know, landscape painting, if you will, as anything else. And of course, living in France uh, around the time of the war, 1914, he does do paintings depicting aspects of the war itself. And again, uh, from the 1914 time, you can see he's engaging in kind of this uh, almost uh, Van Gogh-esque, if you will, post-impressionistic style where he's reducing a lot of the landscape and even the figures uh, to, to aspects of color and, and really putting them together in terms of form. Uh, but at the same time, shifting gears again, and it's amazing how well Tanner can do this. Uh, we go back to the biblical narratives of Daniel and the lion's den from 1917, the other version, second version of this image, where again, we have just the sea of lions uh, and the figure of Daniel almost is, is invisible within the, the light that's shining there. But we can see that uh, he doesn't really seem very much uh, in, in danger. And a uh, few more images as we kind of approach the end of his career. Uh, but again, still maintaining these religious themes, but again, really, really becoming more and more abstract. Flight into Egypt from 1922. Uh, the flight into Egypt, we've seen a few images of this before, but again, this one, he's really even reduced the figures down to colors where we can still identify Mary from Mary from being blue, and we assume, of course, the other figure to be Joseph. A few more images along this line, and again, uh, these are really nice to see uh, in high quality because a lot of the nuances, a lot of the subtleties you would kind of lose uh, if you didn't, especially the one on the left where, again, it's, it's as if you, can, you, you yourself are seeing these figures off in the distance in the middle of the night uh, uh, sneaking towards the land of Egypt. Destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah is, is uh, I believe, his last painting. And again, this is a landscape, but uh, this is as much about color and the application and these wonderful forms. Uh, it's interesting how he's taken the sky uh, and the organic shape of kind of this destruction, and he's really just repeated the shapes down into the landscape itself. And really the only variations that we see uh, are the colors themselves. And we have this wonderful separation by that pink. Tanner was uh, awarded the French Legion of Honor in 1923. Uh, and as we can see, uh, like all of the great American painters, he of course has a, a stamp issued uh, in 1973 uh, for the wonderful price of eight cents again. 
an American painter, uh, but again living in Europe, but a wonderful artist uh, to kind of show the transition between realism and abstraction.